So I just sent her the invite. There she is. Hi, Ms. La Pena. Hi, Mr. Toscano. What you doing? Nothing, just here. Okay, so I'm with your hopefully future Algebra 2 students, because Ms. La Pena <laughs> is a great math teacher, but she um, doesn't want to join Burgess. I don't know why. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so let's pressure her. Um, Ms. De La Peña, what, the reason why I called you is um, I wanted to see if you can help us out with the math concept. Cool. Let me show you what it is. I like math. I know you do. <laughs> so we're looking at assets and bases and, of course, pH. And our equation for pH is pH equals the negative logarithm of the concentration of hydrogen ion. Now, the logarithms can be very intimidating for some students. Do you think it, you could help us to understand this concept a little better? Yes, I can. All right, teach us. Okay, so I'm very excited to be here, but I'm not a good online teacher, so, but I'm very excited. Anyways. Um, what happens when you guys have an x squared? So if you have y is equal to x squared, how do you, how do you get rid of that? We take the square root of x. We take the square root of x, right? Yes. Well, we know also that y equals to square root of x. It's also its own function, right? Yes. Like it has its own graph and whatever. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Same thing with logs. So whenever we want to get rid of x squared, we use square root of x, right? Yes. So if we want to get rid of an exponent, we use log. Oh, okay. So same thing. Okay. So let's say we have our exponent looks like this. Trying to make it big. So that is b raised to the power of x equals y, correct? Yes, that's correct. Okay. So b is our base number, not okay. base as in like base and acid. Thank you. Base number. You. <laughs> okay. Our x is just our variable, just okay. like whenever we have an x that we plug in, and our y is our answer, correct? That's Very good. usually what we have. Yes. Right? Okay. Now, if we want to put it, if we want to get rid of the exponent, because it's really hard to work with an exponent, we want to get rid of it, especially because it's an x. We use a log. So, we write log. We write log. Okay. And then, we put the base. So, the base that we had on our exponent is the same base on the log. Base number. So that refers to the letter B, correct? Yes, that will be the letter B. Great. And then our exponent is always going to be our new answer for the log. So the exponent is always the answer. So on the first one, our exponent was X, and now it's the answer. Okay. okay. Now we only have one number left over, right? Which in this case is Y, whatever. So we just write it there. So that reads log base b of y equals x, correct? Yes. So to go from b to the x equals y, you write log of b, base b, y equals x. Cool. So that's how you go from an exponent to a base, to a base. What am I thinking of now? From an exponent to a log. Okay. So you should probably take a picture of this or a screenshot or write notes on it just so that you don't forget. And that will be it for going from one to the other. Okay. Now, what if we had, let's say we wanted to multiply 10 times 10 times 10. I know that is 1,000. Can we write that in the logarithm or logarithm, uh, logarithmic function? Mm -hmm. Okay. So we know that 10 times 10 times 10 
Yeah. That would be 10 cubed, right? Yes. Everyone in their house, like, what? 10 cubed. Okay. We know 10 cubed is equal to 1,000. Yes. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to put log. Our base on the exponent on the exponent function one is 10. So the base stays the same. So base 10 on the exponent, base 10 on the log. Like that. Okay. The hardest part about this is like moving my iPad and then trying to see if you can actually see it. That's the hardest part. Okay. Okay. So now we know that the exponent is always going to be the answer. So here we had an exponent of three. So that's going to be our answer. And now we only have one number left over for 1,000. We just put it right there. Cool. Okay. okay. Cool. That was simple. So, yes. Now something interesting that you can look at from here is that when you have log base 10, that's like just saying log. You don't have to put a base. So for example, do you know how like when you have one X, you just write X? Yes, it doesn't make a difference. Yeah. So that's what we take as standard. So log base 10 is what we take as standard. So whenever we have that, just like we have on that one, we can just write log of 1000 is equal to three. So like that. So the standard base uh, number for logarithms is always 10, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. okay. That's cool. always 10. Now, what if we had a very small number? Because we're working with concentrations, and those are usually on the um, like 0 .00 stuff. So let's say we had a concentration or just a number of 0 0.00001. Four zeros and a one. OK. Can we somehow write it in a, a logarithm? Okay, so this is what I did. I made like a little equation type of thing. Okay, so we have that number that Mr. Toscana said right now. And then we want to use a base 10 because we know that that's the standard. So we want to use the easy one, right? Yes. So that's why I put 10 as my base. Okay. So if I want to know the exponent of it, if I want to get rid of the exponents, because I want to get that answer, I have to use log. So I'm going to use log. I don't have to write the 10, or do I, Mr. Yotoscano? No, because uh, that's the standard, so you don't have mm -hmm. to write it. Because I have a base 10, right? Mm -hmm. And then what is always my answer? Your, your answer? The exponent. Mm -hmm. The exponent. That one is always my answer when I'm talking about log. So I have that so far. What is the okay. only number? What is the only number I haven't written? 0 0.00001. Yes, 0 0.00. I don't know why my pencil just became fat. Just like me this quarantine. 0, okay, 0, 0, 0, I know. Okay, so that's what I have. Okay. okay. So if I want to know what I have to raise 10 to, what, what power 10, 10 needs to be raised to, in order to give me that 0 0.00, 4 zeros and 1, <laughs> um, I have to take the log of that number, and it'll give me the exponent. OK. So if I do that, it'll actually give me something really interesting. It'll give me x is equal to negative five. So if I put on my calculator log of 0 0.00001, it'll give me negative five. I see. And if I write 10 to the negative five on my calculator, if I put that, I'm gonna get, guess what? My answer. Like that, kind of. Cool. Now, so then 
what you're saying is, let's say if I want to write that in scientific notation, because that's the way we're going to be writing in chemistry. So let me clear this drawing. So if I want to write 0 0.00001 in scientific notation, it would, it'll be 1.0 times 10 to the negative 5, right? Yes, exactly. Nice. There you go. That makes a lot of sense now. Okay, well, I think that's it, Ms. De La Peña. We won't take any more of your time. We appreciate it. And hopefully, we'll see you next year. <laughs> Bye, Mr. Toscano. Bye, guys. Bye, Ms. De La Peña. Okay, now that we saw how to use this logarithm, so let's go back to chemistry. Let's see how all this mathematics relates to chemistry. We are going to recall the concentration of hydrogen ion in water, which is 1.0 times 10 to the negative 7 molar. I don't want to say this very small number. So if we were to plug this in into our calculator, so I have log over here. Remember, don't confuse it with ln. So I'm going to use control log. And it's giving me yeah, base 10, but yours should not, you shouldn't be, you shouldn't need to write the base 10. Then 1, remember we didn't use times 10, we used double E function, which is this one. E to the negative 7 parentheses. Oh, let me delete that parentheses. And we press enter, and we have negative 7, as you can see. Now let's say I wanted to make this a positive number. I want my answer to be positive. I can just add a negative in front of the log. Base 10. 1. Double E function. To the negative 7. And my answer is now positive 7. What does this mean? That means the exponent related to the hydrogen ion concentration in water is 7. Since water is neutral, that's how the P8 scale was born because that um, 7 is the number for the pH in water. So water has a pH of 7, so that's the midpoint. As you can see here, water is right here in the middle. So for the pH scale, which I, I like this one, I think it's pretty cool. It gives you examples. Whenever you have a solution with the pH less than 7.0, so anywhere here in this area, the solution is acidic. If you have a solution with the pH of exactly 7, the solution is neutral. If you have a solution with the pH greater than 7.0, it'll be basic or alkaline. So that's why the water, like essential water, those waters are called al alkaline waters because their pH is greater than 7.0. Now we can look at some applications of pH. That means exercises. So let's say we had a, an unknown substance and we wanted to know whether it was basic or acidic. The only piece of information we have is its hydrogen ion concentration, which is 4.2 times 10 to the negative 10, 10 molar. All we need to do is substitute um, the hydrogen ion concentration into the equation. So let's do that. Let's write the equation, which is pH equals negative log of hydrogen ion concentration. So, I'm going to use blue, pH is equal to negative logarithm of parentheses 4.2 times 10 to the negative 10. Let's see what the pH is. 
pH equals let's go negative log of 4.2 so 4.2 times 10 which is double e function this one and to the negative 10. We press enter and the P8 is 9.376. We're going to round to 9.38. So our pH is 9.38. We need to know if it's acidic or basic. Remember, if it's over or greater than 7.0, then it's basic. Ours is a 9.38. Thus, this solution is basic right basic box it and that's our answer i have only one example with this lesson um better say with this video i'm going to record three more examples so make sure you go and watch the other examples they're going to help you with your assignment Bye.